Hi, it's Dr. Emily Isham here for Rare Cancers Australia again to talk about the COVID antivirals that are currently available in Australia because it seems to be causing a lot of confusion. So as you would have heard, there are two new oral antiviral treatments for COVID available in Australia. Both are now listed on the PBS, so the costs are subsidised by the government for those who are eligible. The first one, Molnupiravir, essentially causes the virus to mutate to the point that it actually kills itself. The other treatment, which is combination, it's called Paxlovid, and it contains two antivirals. Nermotrelvia is a new one and it stops the virus from replicating, whereas Ritonavir is there really to stop the liver metabolizing Nermotrelvia too quickly so it can hang around and continue doing its job. There are also eligibility criteria to access these antivirals in order to ensure the limited supply is available for those who are more medically vulnerable. But you may have heard that these criteria have recently been broadened by Otagi, which means more of you are able to access these early treatments if you're COVID positive. Currently, if you test positive for COVID, you may be eligible for antiviral treatments if you are 70 years and older, regardless of risk factors or symptoms, 50 years or older with two additional risk factors, a First Nations person 30 years or older and with two additional risk factors, 18 years or older and moderately to severely immunocompromised. And it must be within five days of your first COVID symptom to get maximum effect. You may also have to present evidence of your current COVID infection, like a positive rat or PCR result. Let me explain a bit more about the differences between these two drugs. So far, the evidence suggests that Paxlovid is more effective in reducing risk of hospital admission or death by 70 to 90% as compared with Molnupiravir, which reduces that risk by about 30%. This information is based on data from clinical trials that were done at a time when Delta was in higher circulation though, and they were only carried out on people who were unvaccinated. However, Paxlovid does have far more contraindications because it interacts with lots of other medications and it requires well-functioning kidneys. So many people aren't able to take it. Consequently, as you can imagine, it can take a long time for your healthcare provider to work out which drug might be best for you if you are in fact eligible, especially if you have a more complex medical history. Both of the antivirals need to be started within the first five days of symptoms and there can be side effects which your healthcare provider will go through before you start the treatment. Neither of these treatments should be used during pregnancy. That's really important. Given the time constraints to starting virals at five days and sometimes difficulty sourcing these treatments, if you fall into any of those characteristics categories I listed above and are more high risk, it would be wise to think about your plan of action should you contract COVID. And knowing that GPs are really hard to get appointments with pretty much nationwide at the moment, perhaps consider pre-booking an appointment prior to getting COVID to discuss what you might be eligible for and how to access it when you do actually get COVID. However, it must be said that currently scripts can't be dispensed in advance. If you are uncertain about your eligibility, risk factors, or where to find a pharmacy that stocks these oral antiviral treatments, please look on the Australian government website, www.health.gov.au. I hope that's helpful. Please get in touch with us at Rare Cancers Australia and let us know if you have any concerns that you would like us to address. See you next time.